What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful, here with a name you know. You've seen him here on Fightful many times. You've seen him in the UFC. You've seen him in MLW. You're seeing him in New Japan Pro Wrestling right now. And you're going to see him this Saturday at Battle in the Valley when he faces Homicide. The sold-out Battle in the Valley, but you can still check it out on Fight. Tom Lawler, how we doing, man? I guess I'm doing good. You had your carrots today? I'm alive. I'm alive now. Listen, don't get me started with this. We, we, we can get to that a little bit later. Listen, the older but you I'm, get... I'm, you... I'm, 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 I'm starting off hot. I'm pissed off. Why are you I'm pissed off? Mood. Did you watch Power Slap or something? Oh, God. I mean, now I'm going to be really... <laughs> I've, I've been really aching mad. to ask you about Power I'm, Slap. I'm pissed off because yesterday I go on Twitter and there's a big... To me, this is a big New Japan pro wrestling mm -hmm. event happening this weekend you know um it is kind of the first show since the i guess rebranding or restructuring of strong so to me someone that's been in you know one of the hallmarks of new japan strong throughout its time it, it means a lot to me and i go on twitter and we have some great great staff in new japan we have some great wrestlers great great commentators right um Kevin Kelly, he's awesome. I love Alex Kozlov. Ian Riccoboni, very talented. He's great. But he puts out, yeah, he, he puts out a uh, preview of the show, and he says, hey, this Mercedes versus Kyrie match sold out the show, and now it's only gotten better because we've added all these matches. We've added Okada Tanahashi. We've added Clark Connors against Zack Sabre Jr. We've added the West Coast Wrecking Crew against the Motor City Machine Guns. We've added, who else is there? Geez, Kratos against Coglin. We've added Rocky Romero in that eight-man tag. We've added David Finley versus Bobby Fish. Yeah. But there's one match that Ian Riccoboni doesn't mention on there, and it's my fight. The Filthy Rules fight with Homicide coming up. Riccoboni... Like I said, awesome, very talented guy. But I was here. I was in New Japan strong before he ever was. And the fact that I don't take it personally, but professionally, I'm pissed off. My name should be up there with the likes of Mercedes and Kyrie, with Okada and Tanahashi, with Clark Connors and Zack Sabre Jr., with all these other names. And quite frankly, I don't feel like I'm getting the respect that I should have for my work the past few years. And, you know, maybe maybe that's just a, a small microcosm of it. But the fact that it even happens, you know, leads me to believe I've got a lot of work to do. I'm not around just to be the best on Saturday in New Japan. I'm not, I'm not around to be the best in New Japan strong. I'm around to be one of the best professional wrestlers on this fucking planet, Right. And Saturday, against Homicide, the fans of New Japan, who haven't gotten to see a different side of me, they're going to see it. And everyone else is going to see it too, Sean. And what are they going to see? They're going to see that Filthy Tom is one of the best professional wrestlers on planet Earth. So tune in! I think that uh, isn't even uh, like an argumentative point at, at at this level, you got Shibata and, and Kazuchika Okada putting over like how great you are, how much they admire your skills. Uh, but Ian Riccoboni has no respect for you at all. How does that make you feel? I, I will say I this: mean, it's not it's it, not just Ian Riccoboni, but it's that, Ian. No, that, it's Ian. Me, let's let's was, let's zero in specifically on well. Ian. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great elbow drop, though. Have you ever seen his elbow drop? Listen, what what of my favorite. Uh, sayings to live life by is that you don't go around blaming others for your mistakes. No, I disagree. You single out one person. Okay. And you blame it all on them. Okay, that's that's actually very good. So this kind of comes full circle because I mentioned Power Slap. I feel as if they would have announced you and Ian in a Power Slap match. Th that would have sold things out before Kyrie and Mercedes. <laughs> I don't know, we've yet to see if anybody's lining up to actually buy tickets for power slap. Um, you know, my, I, I, I hate to say this, but I've watched 
the majority oh, of no. Power Slap. Oh, no. But I've been I, aching to ask you about it. Yeah, I hate myself for it, <laughs> but I can't tune away. And um, the, uh, during the initial episode, my mother must have caught it. She goes, what the, what the hell is this? And then she was like, you know, I think you may have been the impetus for this. You may have started it by punching that guy Dave, in the bathroom. Dave Kaplan. Ultimate fighter. So, um, yeah, I was like a, a prototype for this sport, I guess. So, man, all this ties in together but, because. Now, my management actually, Sean, my management a few years ago, this was like well before Power Slap was even put out into the media, asked if I was interested in doing it. So, and I said no. But I said, hey, look. I'm there, so I, glad I, you said no. A bunch of dumbass pro wrestlers who would probably do it. And uh, I am shocked that they haven't got Junie Browning involved in this yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you, do you know where he is? He's probably is like two miles him? from my house right now. I live in the same city yeah. as him. Is there, is there a penitentiary there? Uh, yeah. There actually is, right over the hill. <laughs> from, miles where, away. from where I live. I, you can hear the siren if, like, if you hear the siren, you're like, what's going on? What's happening here? But, like, I'm surprised they haven't done that. Do you think we're going to end up seeing worked slap fights? I don't know. I mean... Uh, like, to progress wrestling yeah, angles, I mean, I even. Would. Yeah, I would do it. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you make it to the point in your life where you're competing in that anyways, right? Well, yes. What moral standard... Do you think we have here? Well, you I mean, know, I think a, they could in wrestling too. Like, I would love to see Hangman and John Moxley, like, <laughs> to to promote their big fight. They're just in there slapping each other. But also, like, I, I look at that and I'm like, mm, that say Omos and Braun Strowman did like an arm wrestling match. It does like 20 million views on YouTube. Just ridiculous stuff like that does. I feel like stuff like this could also work for pro wrestling not from like a me and you watching it type of thing we'd be like this is kind of dumb but from a morbid curiosity youtube click point i would you know i would put this in like you could have a uh, a segment you know throw this on like Miz tv yes and uh you know you have like bronson reed is mad at uh god i don't know who he's mad at he's mad at gallows because gallows told him he should have <laughs> Stayed in Japan because he beat Okada. Yes. And uh, so they have a slap fight. How about that? I think I people would, love would tune it. in to see that. I would love yeah. it. So there, there you get the work slap fight. You get some synergy. That's what I like. You want to, I mean, if you wanted to run that angle in AEW. See, that's know? that's why I said Moxley and, and Hangman. Hangman and Moxley. Yeah, 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 just for the promotion aspect of it. That'd be cool. Although I would kind of like to see Nakazawa and Brandon Cutler do that too. That would be fun. But, yeah, maybe... Um, yeah. Maybe like MLW could get some guys on on patrol <laughs> for reals. Oh, I mean, some geez. of the people, some some guys may have already been on it that we don't know about, but throughout all the companies, not just there. <sighs> so there was. How, big... how, have there been any pro wrestlers that have ended up on on patrol yet? I mean, come on. Not that I've seen. Although I, like, listen. There was a while when I was watching Bellator where I thought I was more likely to see an MMA prospect on the Cops episode that was the lead-in <laughs> than a Bellator undercard for a while. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I remember I trained with a guy, and he's like, oh, I'm fighting at Bellator next week. I was like, have you ever fought? And he's like, no. He's like, I've never had a pro fight. Hold some tickets, though. <laughs> that's the thing. He was local. That's what they do. That's the old. That's the old method there. So... This Saturday, you're facing homicide in a filthy rules match. If it's filthy rules, couldn't you just change the rules as they go along? Don't you have the ultimate say in that? Aren't you the, like the commissioner who sets these rules? And what type of rules would you adjust on the fly no. if you could? No, 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 no. It, I, I don't set these rules. These are, there's no ropes and there's no rules. You win pinfall submission ko those are the only rules okay i have to worry about i'm not changing anything seems like it's somewhat like, uh, sanitized rules to me if you can't wait, change them then how filthy are they <laughs> hold on 
Changing something makes it cleaner. So that is against your point <laughs> okay, right there, Sean. Okay, right? that's also a fair point. Yeah, thank you. I have so these, been... these will fester. These rules will fester and permeate until the match happens. All right. And then I believe as we make our introductions, the filthy commission has decided the ropes will come down. Any and all weaponry can be used. It is essentially right up Homicide's Alley. It's a it street. is. It is up Homicide's Alley. So, But, 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 but. There's no ropes yes. for him to use to escape. He can't run away. He can't grab on and hold on for dear life like he's been doing. There's not going to be a referee that he can use to distract me. He, you know, I know now. I know what the rules are. I know they haven't been enforced one single time I've been in the ring with him. He's pulling forks and shit out of his sock. Don't you get checked for that? The referee comes over and checks me every single time to the point that I get to strip down into these tiny ass little jorts, right? But Homicide can wear enough shit on himself that he can pull a fork out of his fucking socks and I got to deal with that, right? At least now I know what's going to go down on Saturday and I can be ready for it. Homicide's not. So, I mean, I know that you push for the filthy rules match, but like, what are you going to do when he shows up with like a bag full of baby carrots? How how are gonna you going to handle this? Listen, I'm going to hold, I will hold Homicide, who I don't have very much respect for nowadays anyways. I will hold him in the same level of contempt that I hold anybody that would come out brandishing a bag of carrots during a match. Right, I've seen this happen one time in my existence. And Ye now I have massive beef with both these guys. Blackwood... And more importantly, Angels. I'm watching this great match. If I can put over West Coast Pro. It's great, great promotion. Awesome promotion in San Francisco. I'm watching this great match between Blackwood and Starboy Charlie. They're just out there lighting it up. I'm having a hell of a time hooting and hollering with my boys Royce and Jarrell watching the match. And how does it end? How does it end, Sean? With a distraction. A distraction from angels when he walks out eating a bag of carrots and Blackwood gets the win. I love it. It's cerebral. Go away. Go away, Heat. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, a big headline today that got a lot of... Uh... A lot of criticism was Goldberg. Wait, is this a comedy show? What are yeah. you doing? Are you doing a, are you doing a bit right I, now? No, I, I, I am genuinely interested in your responses to these things. Okay. Because I listen to you often. Goldberg buried Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show. Did you uh, watch her Super Bowl halftime show? And did you have opinions on it? I, I watched it not intently. Okay. I would say. What was his beef with her performance? I didn't read it past the headline. Come on. Come on. He, he buried it, though. I'll pull it up right now. I'll read you the quote verbatim. How about that one? Goldberg, Rihanna. I'm sure he said some, some incredible things about this. He said, I thought Rihanna was freaking horrible. I was disgusted by it. Let's just say that. That's the understatement of the year. I thought it was disgusting. I thought it was horrible. I love that he had, he's like, you all better be glad that I'm not saying more about this. Yeah, what What vitriol? I mean. She was pregnant. What's, well, yeah, what's it? That's what he's disgusted by? He's disgusted by a, a glowing, beautiful, pregnant woman? I didn't see her do anything inappropriate, Me did either. she? No. She, wasn't, she didn't like go out there pull up her dress and like, you know, didn't give birth on stage or, or anything like that. Yeah, like that no. didn't happen. No, we didn't get a, a video or, or a reenactment of the conception. You know, I mean, what's his, what's his problem? It, it is. It does seem like a problem. And, uh, you had some problems with Fred Rosser for quite a while. Tom Lawler. Um, Fred Rosser really reinvented himself in new Japan, specifically strong. Like, just a complete reinvigoration of his career 
But that reinvigoration had to come as a result of getting hit by you repeatedly on numerous occasions. I mean, to sort of reintroduce a guy like that who most wrestling fans do know of, but had never seen him like this. How, how was that for you to, to sort of experience and be a part of? I really, the time I spent with Fred in that ring is some of, uh, some of the best moments of my life, Sean. Um, there was a time where I didn't watch wrestling from about like 2007, 2008 until I think 2011, you know, three years, a couple years off. Wasn't really into it. Was disenfranchised with the scene. There was really no indie scene back then. You know, it was either WWE or TNA or really uh, nothing at the time. And uh, I didn't watch wrestling for a few years. And then I don't know why I started tuning in again. But the first thing that really drew me back in was the Nexus. Okay. Right. I started watching around that time. Right when they showed up and destroyed Raw. And who was part of the Nexus? One of the men. Ryback. That is one of the men. That is one of the men. That is one. <laughs> but another one. Fred Rosser. I was going to say Michael McGillicuddy. Okay. But yes. Fred Rosser was one of them. Was he not? And I watched him. I mean, I watched his time as a prime time player and uh you know to be in new japan and wrestle somebody who kind of brought you i was a fan of the nexus to be fair right i, I like the idea of these young groups of guys fighting against the older generation and trying to trying to uprise and, and it, i mean there's a lot of a lot of metaphors you can find in life you know that you can draw from these kind of angles and i was a fan of the nexus Right, but then uh, Darren Young yeah. just kind of, you know, wore out his welcome. He was a prime time players had their time in the sun. That was cool. His time with uh, Bob Backlund, I yeah. guess, was that was that was fun for a little bit. But you know, really, I don't think he was used uh, to his full potential, as we could see here. And I drove to New Japan Strong to one of the first shows and I don't ask very many questions when I'm on my way to fight people. I just kind of, you know, get a date and a time and I show up and uh, I message a matchmaker and I say, Hey, who am I fighting this weekend? Fred Rosser. And I was like, what? Fred Rosser, huh? That's who I'm wrestling in new Japan. Okay. So uh, the minute we got in there, it was a completely different guy than I had seen on TV. And even now, the Fred Rosser that I've shared the ring with and fought against, um, you know, over the past year or two since our first meeting is a completely different guy than it was when we first fought a few years ago. And we've had plenty of times where, I mean, Fred has said some stuff. Fred, on oh. video, they, they had to bleep it out. I was about to ask you about that. What was your reaction yes. to this? He said he was going to find out from the boys where I live he was going to come to my house and he was going to, I mean, he was going to like the worst thing you could do to somebody. He was going to sexually assault me in front of my family. Yeah. In front of your actually, family. Had to be, had to be he didn't say that. Now we've smoothed things over. I know it was a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a wrong choice of words on his part. Uh, since then we fought. Plenty water under the bridge. Why well, it's water <laughs> under the bridge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Fred is a guy. Fred's a guy that not only would I go and fight against any day of the week, but I know that if push came to shove and I had to, I could count on him to fight alongside me. You know what I mean? Or help you do some B and E's and home invasions. Whatever. I'm not. I don't want to touch this subject any longer. Oh, man. Uh, we're going to move on to Shibata because yeah. th that My had to be... favorite type of bread. Yes. <laughs> that had to be like a special moment for you. How, like, how did that come together? How were you approached and told, uh, Shibata, because I, I assume he probably picked you. That's a, that's a good question. A question I'll probably never uh, <laughs> get the answer to. 
Uh, I was, uh, you know, this is kind of around the time that uh, Strong was like, I guess for better, the tapings, Mm -hmm. for a lack of better term, were canceled. And uh, New Japan said they were going to be restructuring the um, the show. So I really, I had no clue what was going on. I had uh, just come off of like a kind of a professional high by being on the uh, Stardom Historic Crossover Show, teaming with Shuri, getting to wrestle against Julia and Zack Sabre Jr., who, you know, I would love to wrestle any day of the week. One of my favorite guys in the world to watch wrestle. And uh, then, you know, all of a sudden, like, I feel like I have no home. Like, these shows are canceled. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if there's shows that are going to replace that. I don't know if New Japan is going to continue running in the USA. I had no clue what was happening. And during the midst of this, I got a call from the office and they say, Hey, would you be interested <laughs> in wrestling at the Inoki Bombay show against Katsuro Shibata? And it was like, at first I said, no, I said, ah, <laughs> not really into it. You, a new year's Eve MMA show in Japan. I never really wanted to be a part of one of those wrestling Shibata on that show after I've defeated the majority of the LA Dojo cronies and it's the memorial show for one of his mentors, Antonio Inoki. No, that doesn't make any sense, right? Why would I do that? But I figured it was the holiday season and in the holiday spirit, I gave them what they wanted. I packed my bags on Christmas morning and I flew over to Japan to wrestle Katsuyori Shibata at Inoki Bombaye. I got to meet Naya Ogawa. I got to meet uh, Tadao Yasuda. I got to meet Yuji Shimada. I got to meet, uh, I believe it's Tanagawa. I got to meet everybody that had been involved, you know, in, in the past in these Inoki Bombaye shows. Guys I had watched in MMA fights. Uh, I got to, you know, Josh Barnett fought on that show. In the uh, the main event of the Gamera Jima portion, Rafael Lovato made his return on that show. Uh, that's a guy I actually hate to say it, but I lost by decision against uh, Abu Dhabi in 2009. Um, Melvin Manhoof had another retirement on that show. So even to be a part <laughs> of that, even to be a part of that would have been awesome. He, he, he got leg locked by Fat Ninja. Well, listen, like, I feel like when it comes to the roulette of New Year's Eve shows, you, you won because, like, you could have, they could have called you and said, will you sumo Akebono? Will you fight Hongman Choi in an MMA fight? Floyd Mayweather's looking for an exhibition boxing opponent. Like, Jose Canseco's back. He wants to do more. Like, you never know what's going to be thrown your way. Yeah. Well, I would have been down for all those. Uh, those all would have been really fun. Yeah, you you at power slap against uh, <laughs> Butterbean. I don't know what one of those grandmas Gabby Garcia beat up, <laughs> or you know Gabby I mean? Garcia. <laughs> I, that, that, that's what, I, there's a reason I didn't choose her. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I bypassed her. <sighs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I I can't even tell you how many times in my life I watched these Japanese New Year's Eve shows or just, you know, any MMA or Japanese pro wrestling show in general, falling asleep to it, to the the sounds of Alcona. And then somebody being introduced. That's all I remember in my head over and over. Oh man. And to finally be on one of these shows. It was so cool, man. Just so like, it's a memory I'll never forget being locked in the octopus stretch at the very end. Tatsuya Shibata. I went one time to the LA dojo and he took about two hours to teach me the penalty kick in this fight, in this match, I had him on the ropes. He was one point away from being defeated under UWF rules. One point away, one rope escape, one hard throw, one knockdown. He would have been done. And I figured what better way to put him away than to go for the penalty kick that he taught me. But he countered it, dumped me on my head, choked me with the very sleeper hole that I've put away many of his 
charges with and then locked me in the octopus. And the last thing I wanted to do, the last thing I wanted to do, Sean, was to reach those, to re- reach the ropes or tap out. I just wanted that moment to last forever. <laughs> At 12 minutes, 30 seconds, each knee, son, da. It ended. 12 minutes, 30 seconds. One, two, three. The call of Anoki. It was meant to be, baby. Love that, love that that moment exists in time. I love it because... I don't even know how it happened. It's like, <laughs> we don't get a time call, nothing. I saw Shibata put up a picture of a stopwatch that he had, <laughs> and it ran out at 1230. It was just... It was awesome, so... So uh, I wish I could do it again tomorrow and the next day. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll get to. You never know. I mean, Shibata kind of decides what he's going to do. He's like, yeah, I think I might wrestle uh, Orange Cassidy on AEW Rampage. Yeah. And then he's be like, Tom, you're doing power slap against Hongman Choi. Yes. Uh, I love it. Yeah. X-Arm. We need to bring X-Arm back. Do you remember that? Yeah. Of course, I remember that. No, we, I don't know that we do need to bring that back. We need listen. I would watch fight, that over Power Slap. Fight for sure. Circus. Fight Circus oh, has yeah. quite a few good uh, events. Have you watched one of theirs? I haven't. Indian leg wrestling. Oh, okay. I need to check that they out. Have, they have phone booth fighting. Oh, I have seen that. I have seen Two that. Two on one MMA. I'm uh, surprised we don't have a thing yet that's like you, shit only. You know those finger traps? They make those for arms oh, and people just punch yeah, each yeah. other. That would be cool. Yeah. I mean, cool, and then, like, I don't want people to get CTE, but that's going to happen during that. Yeah. You know. Uh, so. You, feel do a, f- you could do a two-handed version where you're just. Uh, <laughs> Headbutts. <laughs> not, no. You're attached at the. Oh. With the trap. <sighs> There's going to be a lot of egos bruised in, in that one. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> as long as it's egos. And, and You'd have to get them fitted as well. Uh, reminder guys, battle in the Valley this Saturday, before we wrap up, as far as new Japan goes, are you signed there full time? Are you working on a per appearance basis? How's that working right now? You're always trying to get these, uh, these scoops, huh? These deals. Yeah, that's, that's my job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, r- r- right now I'm not, I'm, I'm available for independent bookings. Okay. Does that mean um, that you're signed or that you're, you're. Yeah. Okay. You're so, I have an agreement. Okay. That means I will be showing up in New Japan or... So you have obligations, so to speak. I have obligations. I mean, like, when I remember I talked to Carl Anderson months ago, and he's like, I don't care where I sign. I'm working these dates. I'm going to do these dates. I'll be there through Wrestle Kingdom. And New Japan was like, we trust you. I can't believe that's a thing. (laughs) But... uh, it, it seems much more diplomatic these days than it used to be, yeah. Which is which is nice. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to tell the people before we go off the air? Besides, obviously, don't threaten to invade his home. Actually, do. Uh, you can. Yeah, I've been I've been like planning <laughs> a lot of things to do to people if they try to break in, and I need you know willing participants to at least try. You know, if I don't get to practice. These attacks on these intruders. You've got the you've got the new them. home sweet home alone on repeat <laughs> from Disney Plus, right? Like, I've been I've been working on some some stuff for ho- homicide, you know. <laughs> okay, oh, that's fair. Because because on Saturday at New Japan Battle in the Valley, filthy rules fight, no ropes, no rules. It's gonna be a fight, a street fight between me and Homicide. Somebody's gonna get their ass beat. Not gonna be me. Tom check Lawler, me out. Tom Lawler versus Homicide. Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. It's gonna be like a mirror. <laughs> It'll be like the two doinks looking at each other. That's what I'm expecting this Saturday. As long as I can trap e- uh, Rick Abani in a mouse trap, I'll be happy. I, w- I would love. I, listen, everybody- I I like Ian, but I wouldn't mind seeing that for pure entertainment. I think everybody would like to see that. To be fair. Tom Lawler, thank you so much for the time. Hey, I was going to plug my Twitter. Oh, yeah, please do. Twitter and Instagram, at Filthy Tom Lawler. That's it. I mean, it's it's right below you. You can't see it right now, oh, but I've, I've got it right below you anyway. Guys, check out Battle in the Valley 
Until next time, we're out.